In our last video, we went over on what trim sheets are, and we went ahead and created our initial ID mask and our non-map details. And now in this chapter, we will go ahead and we will finish off our trim sheet over here, and I will show you how it is actually used in a 3D environment. Now at this point, we can turn off our color ID, we no longer need it. And we are going to go ahead and create our base colors in a few stages. First of all, our base colors. The second one is going to be polish on our base colors. And the third one is going to be improving our overall textures. So for our base colors, we are going to keep this nice and simple because I want to go ahead and get quite a clean effect. So it's mostly just going to be metal with some slight roughness variation to it. I want to go ahead and I want to go to my smart materials over here. And then if you scroll down, you will very often see a bunch of steel materials. Now the one that I want to use is I think some clear coat materials which are nice and shiny will work quite well. I'm just going to go ahead and drag this one above our norm map details over here. And I will call this base steel. Now we are first just going to focus on having one overall steel that works well. And then we will go ahead and add some color variations. The one that you want is you want to go into your coating over here. And right now the coating has like a metal edge wear, but I'm just going to go ahead and turn this off. And I'm going to set my coating mask over here to a white mask so that we are only using our coating. We still want to keep the metal below it because it does have some effects. Now you want to go to your underpaint and we can basically just say, uh, let's go for like a little bit of like a lighter metallic paint. Let's start with something quite light, something like this, and maybe make a little bit of like a bluish tone over here, something like this. Now next what I want to do is I'm now going to switch to my 3D view, and you can already see that I have some pretty interesting roughness over here. We can control this roughness, one, by going into our finish rough under our metal, and in here we can play around with our brushing intensity, as you can see over here, and we can also play around with the overall scale of our roughness. I want to set my scale quite low and my brushing intensity also quite low. Next, I'm just going to go to my clear coat and your clear coat actually controls most of your roughness. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tone this a little bit down over here. And I think that this is already like a pretty solid base for our mesh. Now, what we can do is we can actually use the mask in our clear coat to create different colors. Because of course, some of this metal is really light. Some of this metal is darker, so I just want to create a few different color variations of this. I can do this, and first of all what we can do is we can actually get rid of the dust, because it is a plane. When we have a plane, many of these generators will not work. But then in our coating I can go ahead and call this gray metal over here. And now we can go ahead and get started by masking over here uh, which pieces we want to have this gray metal on. So I'm just going to add a simple fill layer, go to my grayscale and anchor points, and now we can select the anchor points just like, like we did before. So our base metal, I want to go ahead and have this base. I want to go ahead and now add another fill layer, and this time for this one I want to select for example my random details over here. And then all you need to do is you need to go and set the mode from normal to art, linear dodge art, and that will just add these pieces together. Now let's say that I also want to go ahead and add another fill and this one is going to be our floor panel. I think that one we can also use as a base and just add it. And yeah, so we do have quite a bit of fill layers but it does make everything nice and non-destructive. Now I want to have my wall panels to be a different color. So all I want to do now is I just want to have my line over here and that is probably the last one that I want to add. So we can go ahead and set this to add and there we go. Then next I can simply go ahead and duplicate our clear coat and I can call this light metal. And then for example just go ahead and get rid of these fill layers except for maybe the last one. Go to your underpaint and let's set this one to be a little bit lighter. And then finally in your fill layer you just want to go ahead and select for example this is going to be our wall panel mask. So we want to make this one a bit lighter and let's add another fill layer. And this one is going to be our console mask over here. And once again, we can add this. Next, this. I actually also in my gray metal want to add my decals. So let's add one more fill. 
anchor points, decals, and let's add over here. And then now that this is done, what we can do is we can go ahead and grab, for example, some steel. So we can just drag this steel in over here. And then we can once again add a black mask to this, add a fill layer. And I want to use my floor for the steel, just like that. And then we also need a little bit of rubber. So we can just type in rubber. And then we can often find maybe some plastic or some rubber or something like that. Let's do plastic armor simple, just to keep things nice and easy. Add another black mask. Add another fill. And then you can go ahead and in your anchor points, I'm going to use the cable for this one. And by the way, in my steel, I want to make sure that my steel is also including the gears that I have. So add a fill, anchor point, gears, and add, just like that. Okay, so now we have like a few base metals. Now, of course, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and in your base steel, we want to make sure that all of these fills that we used are included in here so that we can mask them out. This is as simple as just adding a quick anchor point to these two metals over here. And then in our base steel, we can add a simple black mask and just the same thing over again. We add a fill and sorry, not the base metal mask. This one is going to be our gray metal over here. And then we can go ahead and we can add another fill. And this one we can set to art. And this is going to be our light metal over here. And then over here in our steel, I accidentally set this to the wrong mask. So I want to set this to our, my vent mask over here. Okay, so we now have everything properly divided up in the way that we want it to. And now that we have our base colors to keep things nice and organized and also to fix our normals, we can create a folder called base colors. And then when we add these maps over here, because now it is reading the folder, it will no longer override the normals because the folder settings are set to basically combine all of the normals. So we now have our base colors over here. The only problem that we have now is that we are missing our cutout, as you can see over here. We can fix this by going into our steel, which is the one that has the cutout. And if we just go to our base, we just want to turn off the opacity setting so that now we have a cutout. Next to this, I would also like to create a cutout on this mesh over here because I do not want to have a background when I add these details to my plane as if they were decals. This is once again not too difficult. All we need to do is go down to our normal map details. And then if we have our normal details over here, we can add a nice anchor point. And then let's, you know what, throw this all into a folder. Normal details, which allows us to also immediately mask the anchor point. So let's go ahead and add a black mask to this, along with a fill layer. And this fill layer, you want to select the actual random details, not the normal details, but like just the color that we assigned to this section. Because then all we need to do is we need to throw a fill layer inside of our normal details, turn everything off except for the opacity. And let's set the opacity to black. Call this cut out. And then you guessed it, black mask fill layer and assign your normal details in here. It can be a little bit confusing because we work so much with different fill layers, but you will get used to it. Uh, make sure that if you're doing this in your reference channel, set this to your opacity, uh, press invert, and then you just want to set the alpha behavior to extract alpha. And now as you can see, it has nicely cut out these shapes so we can use them on our decals. Okay, awesome. So we got this stuff done. I would say that the last one that I want to do is I probably want to give like a darker metal to this area over here. And once again, this is something that I can just very quickly do. So let me just very quickly time lapse it. Okay, here we go. Now, I would say one last thing that I'm going to do is I'm already going to quickly balance out my steel and I'm going to get rid of these surface details over here. And maybe in my base steel, I'm going to set my roughness a little bit lower and maybe the color a little bit lighter. 
I'm not going to go over like the actual polishing too much because that would feel a little bit overkill. But just in general, you can go ahead and um, play around with things however you want to get exactly the materials that you want. Now what we can do is we can go ahead and we can add some very simple decals. We can simply go up here, create a folder, let's call it decals. And when I say decals, I mostly mean text. For this one, what you want to do is it's mostly fill layers. Let's call this one text. Let's make the color a little bit whiter. Let's make the roughness quite dull and make sure that metallic is set to black. And with this text, what we can do is we can go ahead and we can add a black mask. And then in this black mask, you can do this even easier. Like instead of doing like a projection, you can even go in here. And there are a bunch of text decals, as you can see here, that I can use. So let's say that I want to use, um, for example, authorized personnel only. I can set my brush quite large. And then you can see that it will already show my mask. So there are many ways that you can do this. Or you can go ahead and do this. Or you can, and then just simply, oh, it's out of saving. And then you can simply stamp it, as you can see. Or what you can do is you can still use your projection. And then it is just a matter of scrolling down. And let's say that we want to go ahead and grab the word danger. We can go in here. And you basically just like nicely want to add these. So I will just go ahead and like add a few of these. Here we go. So I added two versions. I added some orange text, which has this one. And I just went ahead and added some normal text over here. Now, of course, this is all very perfect. So let's break it up a bit. That's going to be quite easy. Just in our decals folder, let's go ahead and add a black mask. To this, let's add a fill layer. And then you can find like a nice crunch map in your textures that you can use. For example, up here, we have like a lot of them. So let's say that we are going to use, for example, this one, the crunch charcoal. We want to add this one in here. And then you can see that already adds like a little bit of damage over here. If you want, you can also combine these crunches. So you can play around with your balance here to add more or less. And then let's say that you want to add another fill layer. And for this one, I'm going to grab, for example, my crunch concrete over here. Or maybe we want to go ahead and crunch concrete like dirty or old. You can do various ones here. Let's do old. And then just play around with your balance and contrast to get some slight damaged areas on your text. Okay, so now that this is done, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and start adding some dirt and some edge highlights to improve our material even more. Now for this, what we need to do is we need to create a special anchor point. And this anchor point will basically combine all of our norm map details and all of our height map details into one anchor point. And then what we can do is we can reference this later on in our dirt. Now for this, we want to go ahead and go to our normal map details over here in the folder. And this is why it is so important to have this folder below our base colors. And now there is a little trick that you can use. So if you go ahead and you can go up here to filters, if you just add any filter, it doesn't matter. What it will do is it will create a filter that is already set to pass through. And then you can just close this. So instead of going over here and adding a paint layer, setting this to pass through on every single channel. That is quite annoying. So adding a filter is a shortcut and we can call this one. Uh, let's call this one master anchor. Now all you need to do here is you need to go ahead and add a anchor point to this very base, just like that. And now it will reference everything that is below it, which is all of these norm map details. Finally, if we just go ahead and let's place this in our base steel, because I do not want the dirt to be affecting our clean steel. I can go up here and let's create a nice folder that we will call dirt. And in here, I'm going to start with like a fill layer and call this OCC underscore dirt. So let's add some occlusion dirt. Let's set our roughness quite low. Let's give it like a little bit of like a brownish color over here, just like that. And then if you want, you can turn off the height, normal and opacity. Now, next, what we can do is we can add a black mask to this and we can use a smart material. For example, let's go ahead and scroll down and let's use this sharp dirt over here. Zoom in a bit. And now what we can do is if we go into our dirt, we need to scroll down to our micro normal and micro height. And in here, you want to reference your master anchor. Now, after you've done this, 
Make sure that on your normal, you set your referenced channel to be your normal channel and on your height for it to be your height channel. Next, if you scroll up to the micro details tab, all you have to do is turn this one on and then you can see that it will generate our dirt in here. You can play around a bit with, for example, your AO radius to get more or less dirt and also your height detail intensity. And next to this, you can of course also play around with, for example, your dirt levels. And let's tone down our contrast a little bit, like this. And now let's just go ahead and say, I want to make like my dirt a little bit lighter and a little bit more subtle, something like this. And the same works for edge highlights. Let's say that we want to go ahead and add another fill layer. Edge highlights over here. What we can do is we can make this, for example, like quite bright. And then in our roughness, we probably want to go ahead and tone this down a little bit. And for the rest, we can turn off everything else. We only will need these two versions over here. Now we can go ahead and we can add a black mask. And this time instead of a spark material, I'm just going to add a generator up here. And I just want to add a curvature generator because I just want to get some soft highlights. We go ahead and zoom in again. You want to go ahead and turn on your micro details. Micro normal, reference your master anchor, and micro height, reference your master anchor. And don't forget to set the correct reference channel, normal, and height over here. And now you can immediately see that we get some nice highlights. You can go ahead and of course play around with your global balance to get more or less out of it. And what I like to do is I often like to go up here to the opacity of my curvature and use that to basically control everything a little bit. And just like that, we now have some extra dirt added. Now, there's a bunch more polishing that you can do. You can balance out the metal and everything. You can add some roughness variation, add some more specific dirt and details and all that kind of stuff. But this is something that I will simply do off camera because else this tutorial would be very long. So what I want to do now is I'm going to show you how that we actually use this trim sheet, how we UV unwrap the models and how that we use it in our level. It's just going to be a nice little bonus. Okay, so here we are in 3ds Max. Now, as you can see here, I have the pillar. You can see that the pillar is mostly made out of metal. And then I simply added planes that have, for example, those norm map details on here. Now, if we would go ahead and open up the UVs of our pillar, you can see that it has just been strategically broken up in a way that it all fits in our metal. Sometimes literally by adding extra lines in between here. And then what we do is we use these construction lines which you cannot see right now, but those are the construction lines that we created to basically hide some of these seams. And we have used these same techniques also on our other assets. So if we would, for example, go ahead and go to Unreal, and as you can see, here is our scene. It is a fully real-time scene. Here is our pillar, and you can see that it works great when we actually cut out these meshes using our material inside of Unreal. We use the exact same material also over here on our window pieces, we used it on our floor. Here you can see our floor details. It's a little bit dark, but you can see it. And over here, you can also see it on our wall details. And all with all, it will create a nice scene. So that was it for this quick tutorial series. I hope that you learned something from it. And I hope to see you next time.